the Joe Rogan experience. We're just, we're, we're, instead what we see is just very extreme talking points. First of all, very extreme interpretations of the actual problem and therefore leading to very extreme solutions to that problem. Right? If you say the world's ending in 12 years, then why not have a Green New Deal? Right? Like it's, so it's, you're operating off of a premise that is highly extreme. And uh, it's just, it's not, it's not healthy political discourse. It's meant to an animate people. It's meant to get people upset and to have a villain. It, it always mm. comes back to the villain and the oppressor and oppressed. It always comes back to this. Everything, everything somebody like Bernie Sanders says can be traced to this specific ideology where one person is to blame or one institution is to blame. And I think that's an extremely unhealthy way to look at things and also intellectually dishonest. I don't know the parameters of a Green New Deal, or the New Green Deal, or whatever the fuck it is, but you hear it all the time. What, mm -hmm. what is the idea behind this? Uh, at its core, uh, a, a complete shift to wind and solar uh, at its core. So uh, an, an idea that if you do that, you will, you will have zero emissions in the next 10 years. But it's an obsession with wind and solar, which I think is interesting. It bans nuclear. Remember when the talking points came out from the Green New Deal? Didn't like nuclear. So that's how you know it's not an actual environmental plan, uh, or at least uh, associated with carbon emissions and, and climate change, because why would you ban the, the one reliable piece of energy that we have that has zero emissions, which is nuclear? So you know it's not about that. It, it also includes free health care for everybody. It includes free college. So it's like, it's like every socialist plan wrapped into one, and then they call it an environmental plan uh, and, and, and ban fossil fuels and, and things like that. So that's a fundamentally what it is. It's a wish list of, of things like that. Well, nuclear has this inherent fear of things going wrong. Chernobyl, yeah. you know, there Fukushima, is. that kind of stuff. But we also put nuclear reactors on like submarines and put a bunch of people on them and yeah. go down to depths and put torpedoes and stuff on them. So, I mean, it's, sure, you know, like I mean, the overwhelming it's very safe. amount of nuclear energy that's been used in this country versus the amount of times we've had nuclear disasters. And there's also the problem with these old systems that were like Fukushima that were implemented mm -hmm. in the 1960s and 1970s. They just, yeah. they're not as good. Yeah, we just... It, it's true, but we, we do have the technology to make them good, and, and, there, and, we're, and I think we should look at ways to research more uh, the, the miniaturized mo modular nuclear devices that are, that are being looked I at. I want a nuclear car. Maybe we can get you that one. That would be the shit. Yeah, we don't have them yet. But can you imagine? You should have a nuclear car, Joe. Why'd you have a nuclear car? What about never, a nuclear flamethrower? Uh, <laughs> now we're getting crazy. Um, so the, the new green deal is just wind and solar. It concentrates on just windmills yeah. and solar. And then the idea is to replace the grid with some sort of, I mean, California, it seems like it could be possible. Like you could just put solar panels on everybody's roof in California. You'd probably reduce the amount of electricity that we need from the grid radically. Yeah, it gets complicated because you don't have sun at night. And, uh, and so th this is the complication with wind and solar in general is that the, you, you need battery backup to really make this work. And that technology just isn't there. Um, the theoretical, so. it's just not there. I mean, but we, I mean you'd, people you'd have live to, off the grid with solar power. Right, but, you, but to make this, a, to, to do that, but when they don't, like say so when there is no sun, the, the plants shift to either you know natural gas or coal or something but else. But here, this is a perfect example. Like here, this is a goofy place to live because it doesn't mm -hmm. rain. We have sun every day. But not at night. And so, right, so but, this is. But 12 so, so hours need, of sun is enough. Well, only if, if you, you have, have the batteries, only if you have the batteries to store it. And right. so, yeah, in theory, if, if you, but we, and we don't right now. Like for, if you for actually, if you want to, if you want to shift the entire energy grid to that, we do not have this, the, the massive amounts of, and there's some good data on this. I don't have it off the top of my head, but it's massive. It is a massive batteries. amount of batteries and farms to actually hold that. There's an energy density problem with wind and solar. It's just a physics problem. So the science can only go so far. And even the theoretical limit to how much a battery can hold, probably, which we're not even, we haven't discovered yet, but it's a theoretical like capacity of a battery, uh, it would still make it very difficult to actually do this. And so it's, it's just real, not realistic. Uh, also, also, there's other consequences to wind and solar, like massive, you know, solar tur or wind turbines. Okay, those are, some people don't like those things. Uh, massive amounts of space needed for 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 solar, and also where you're going to get that that the, the 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 special materials needed for solar panels. Like there's there's other consequences to this, um, and it's 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 not self-evident that that's the only possible way to do it. It's not it's not that like we should shun it. 
Okay, that, and not, nobody's saying that. It should. We advocate for an all and above re- approach. If our goal is less carbon emissions, then we need to be focusing on 100% of carbon emissions, meaning the world's carbon emissions. A Green New Deal focuses on 15% of carbon emissions. Basically says, let's kneecap the United States economy. We'll, uh, we'll destroy fossil fuels. We'll have a utopian society full of wind and solar, even though the batteries don't exist to make that work. But hey, we'll make it work. So and then, then, think- that, then that solves 15% of the problem and has almost no effect on, on the actual climate. So when I say 100% of the problem, what I'm saying is technological innovation, whether that's nuclear or carbon capture. If the goal is less carbon, then let's actually focus on carbon capture. Mm. So I just dropped a bill, uh, Senator Cornyn did on the, on the Senate side, called the Leading Act. And it basically re, it, it repurposes grant funds in the Department of Energy to focus on carbon capture for natural gas plants. So we have natural gas plants in Texas that are zero emissions. They take in natural gas. They operate the, the facility, they create electricity, and then they recapture that carbon and they power the facility with it. Mm. Zero emissions. So if our goal is zero emissions, let's do what works. And also, by the way, that plant can keep going no matter what. doesn't That's matter incredible. what time of day it is. I didn't know that that existed. That's amazing. It's called net power. We talked about something on the podcast before just as a joke. I was saying, why don't they just make a giant building but make an air filter? Like a huge building the size of an air filter. but a, a carbon, carbon capture. A, yeah, huge, huge air filter the size of a building. But apparently they're doing that. Apparently exactly. China is in the, in the process of building things like that. Uh, I've heard of some things in China. I think, yeah, because they have an air pollution problem. Yeah, that's, particulate that's, that's problem. different from yeah. carbon. Okay, so like, because carbon dioxide, you're breathing it right now. You're not polluting it right. necessarily. So they've got a different problem and they're just a mess. And so I, that might be what they're doing. But the, on the carbon capture side, it's definitely happening. It's all the oil companies actually doing it because there's actually an interest in the oil and gas industry to reduce carbon emissions. There's a huge interest. I mean, they, they realize where the conversation is going and we should encourage that. You know, mm-hmm. so there's, Pretty impressive big projects going on by by a lot of these by, by a lot of these folks. So your take is that what the Green New Deal is? I mean, if I can encapsulate it, you're, the, the Green New Deal is basically more of an emotional plea to people that are worried about the future and that see wind and solar as being free and clean alternatives. Yeah. It's a dogmatic approach to mm-hmm. those. Yeah, right. it, it's not based in... Makes people feel good. It's a, it's a feel-good thing, and it really shouldn't make them feel good because, just because of all the consequences I said about wind and solar. It's not... These aren't necessarily clean by themselves. It I mean, also you, involves conflict minerals, right, that you need for these batteries. That, that's what I was getting at, too. Yeah, like, where, where, do, you, where do you mine these things? It's not... It's, it's not the, the United States. It's not the United States where we have child labor laws. It's okay? Afghanistan. It's the Congo. It's a, a lot of a lot of places that the, have these. Good intentions often lead to bad things. So look at the ethanol issue. When we decided that we wanted ethanol in our gasoline, well, I think it was I want to say it's Indonesia or Malaysia, but they cleared tons and tons of forest to to make room um, so that they could so that they could uh, produce the ethanol oil. All right, carbon emissions there <laughs> increased rapidly because of that. You know, all because of our good intentions and like th- these incentives right. and these second, third order effects, they matter. And we have to think about them when we're when we're talking about policy. And if our goal, again, is if our goal is less emissions, then let's let's be thoughtful about how we approach that. Let's not decide on a solution and then look for reasons to back up that solution. 